Welcome to part one of a nine-part series on learning to juggle. We'll be starting with one, two, and three balls, as well as some tricks to do with them, and swiftly moving on to more numbers and juggling with other objects. In today's lesson, we'll be focusing on one ball. It's important that you get to know your ball. This is not some new age concept. All it means is getting used to the way the ball is thrown, how it behaves in your hand. It's important that you pick a ball that's neither too heavy nor too light. A tennis ball is usually a little bit too light because it moves too easily in the wind. You need something that allows you to make mistakes. Something round is ideal because there's only one surface to grip. The more surfaces to grip, the more difficult it will be to juggle. Anything breakable will make it harder for you to learn. Try throwing it in a variety of ways. Try catching it in different ways. See if you can move your arm and other parts of your body to intercept the ball. Get used to how it moves, what happens when you drop it. Dropping is never a thing to be ashamed of. It's always how we improve. So get used to dropping. Drop a lot. Force yourself to drop. Get mad. When you're starting to throw a ball for the first time as a juggler, with your arm down at your side, you're going to practice a simple movement, which looks like this. Practicing this can only take a few seconds, but if you're having great difficulty, getting the exact arm motions can make a big difference. Many of the greatest professional jugglers from around the world stress perfect technique, even on the first ball. This means reaching just up to your shoulder to catch, and reaching down as far as you can, even right down to your leg to throw. This gives you maximum dwell time. Dwell time is the time between catching the ball and releasing it. This makes a big difference in how fast you juggle without changing the height of the throws. You don't need to perfect Russian technique. All you need is a nice, sturdy throw that allows you to catch it again. Try to make sure each throw is the same as the last, to the same point. You're going to be throwing throws that cross just above your right shoulder and above your left shoulder. You don't want it to go straight up and back again to the same hand. You don't want it to go too far out to one or other sides. All you want is a nice, even throw that's easy to follow and easy to watch with your eyes. Try to keep your eyes up, not down at your hands. Try and keep them up towards the top of the arc, rather than following the ball exactly. In other words, don't follow the ball. Keep your eyes where the ball ought to be, that is, the peak of the arc. Never hand the ball across. This is a useful trick when it comes to three balls but almost entirely useless from one to two, and a very difficult way to progress up to three. Always, always throw the ball to the same spot, and always wait for it to come down. Gravity will carry it all the way down to the ground until your hand gets in the way. If you skimp on the one ball lesson, you'll have a much more difficult time when it comes to three. Don't spend all day on one. Keep practicing. I'm going to do some demonstrations of the tricks you can do with one ball. Now, there are many, many different tricks with one ball, and almost every three ball trick imaginable starts with just one. There are things like claw catches, sometimes called tiger claws. The claw catch is a simple operation where you reach over top with your hand rather than catching it from underneath. This usually means you catch it a little earlier on in the arc, but that is not necessarily so. Practice with just one throw, and then work your way up to multiple. Notice that we turn our hands to a normal throw position once we've caught it in the claw catch. It's possible to throw balls and catch them in the claw catch, but it's easier and somewhat more useful to begin with if we catch and then turn, catch, and then turn. 
This is a penguin catch. If that's one of the main names for it, because you often look like a penguin when doing it with three balls. Try to turn your hand before the ball leaves, but after it gets into the air. This will create the penguin effect. If you turn too late, you'll drop it and miss. If you turn too early, it won't look like a penguin catch. You do not need to throw from the penguin position. Again, it's easier and often looks better to turn, catch, turn, throw. Turn, catch, turn, throw. Turn, catch, turn, throw. Back of the hand catches can be done with the flat of the hand or in the cheating method with one finger lowered. The cheating method looks just about as good as the regular method and is slightly more versatile. You can also throw a ball under the leg, behind the back, or any number of other ways. Practicing these with nice high throws will make it much easier to continue juggling. Sometimes, doing a setup throw, where you throw one of the balls slightly higher before the next ball is thrown under the leg, does give you a little more time. Over the shoulder, behind the shoulder, or from the front of the shoulder to the back of the shoulder. Here's an interesting combination. Try throwing one ball around the opposite leg, over the shoulder, and caught behind the back. There's many other combinations. How many can you come up with? In the next episode, we'll be looking at two balls, tricks with two balls, as well as how to use two balls to work on three.